Today I'm going to show you how to create an instrument in Ableton. And it's not just about creating the instrument, but creating something that suits what you need for a track to perform live or to create automation. And you want to save it so you've got all of the settings that you need all in one place so you don't have to constantly go back in and tweak things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into one of the existing Ableton instruments. This is analog and I like the filter based sound. So we're going to drag that in. As you can see here, you've got all of the I mean, you've got so many different elements here to choose from. And I guess sometimes when you're playing an instrument, you only want to tweak one or two or three maybe different elements. So the first thing you want to do is make some decisions as to what you want to tweak and how you want the thing to sound. Well, I tend to like increasing or reducing the frequency modulation. So for example, it sounds like like this straight up, but if we change the frequency, so bring it down. So this is definitely one that is one of the candidates of change. And then resonance is another one. We definitely like that one. And I think we could, yeah, let's use detune. So what we're going to do now is we're going to group the instrument. Let's select the instrument and press control G. And once that is done, we can right click on frequency and map that to macro one. And immediately you'll see all of these different macros appearing and you'll see F1 frequency map to macro one. It's called F1 because there's multiple, there's more than one oscillator. So that's mapped and then we can map the resonance to macro two. And finally, let's just map detune to macro three. So you see here, we've got quite a few of empty macros. We can actually remove some. We can even add some if we want, but we just remove one of the columns here. So we just got the first three showing. The other three will just be sitting there empty. We can do some other cool things like we could rename all of them. So we just call this one frequency and this one here reso, just so it's a bit cleaner looking. And we can just call this one detune. And let's just color coordinate them. Just give them some nice, cool looking colors. And let's just test them out. So let's play on the keyboard and just move this with the mouse. Yep, so that's definitely moving frequency. That's definitely moving resonance. And that's definitely hitting on the detune. And you can tell because you can see these little green markers on each of the parameters. What we can do now is just close that down and just we just see the things that we need. And now we want to recall this instrument rack later. We just call this bass detuned or something like that. So now if I want to, I could actually go into Explorer and actually see this in Explorer. And I can actually just send this to a friend. If they've got analog in Ableton, we should just be able to take that and add it to their presets, which is this location here. And there you go, it should appear for them. So now what I want to do is because I've got the map to macros, I want to use them in performance, but I don't want to sit here using a keyboard or a mouse. So what we can do is click on the MIDI button here. Everything turns blue when you do that. Just click on the knob that you want controlled and then select a knob, which is what I'm doing on your uh, keyboard or controller. And let's just select the next one, select a different knob. And lastly, we'll select detune, different knob. So now I'm going to play. I'm going to try and play and talk at the same time and twist those knobs. And that's a lot more fun <laughs> uh, to do that on a keyboard than to you know, obviously use a mouse. Whilst you can use your keyboard to change the settings, also use this randomize values piece and they'll just give you random values. So you might come up with something really good. Just keep randomizing until you... So you, you can keep randomizing until you find something that you like. Now, the thing about randomization is you might just want to randomize everything except for detune. So what you can do there is exclude detune macro from randomization. So every time you go ahead and do some randomization, detune stays the same. So now let's take a look at macro variations. Just click on the show hide macro variations button. And what we're going to do now is we're going to click on this new button. So say, for example, this one has a low resolution. We want to create a variation with the high resolution. We can right click on frequency and exclude that 
macro from variations and right click on the same for detune exclude that from variations we can just duplicate that now just change the resonance even if we change frequency detune they won't change we can just store that change here so when you click on the play button you'll see the resonance changing but frequency and detune do not change because you've said that they shouldn't you can just go ahead and out and rename this one you can call this one low reso low and call this one high reso so once we play them you can see that one is just a high reso version of the other and we may want to duplicate that well we may want to duplicate that and right click on frequency let's unexclude it macro from variations and just make this a high frequency and just just rename this to high frequency and let's just store that here so you can see every time you click on the play button you'll get different variations as you've changed them so let's just go ahead and play different variations now this is actually quite hard to do when you're using a mouse talking and <laughs> playing on a keyboard so one thing that is really super cool is the key button here and you can map to a key on your keyboard or you can map to midi on your if you've got a push or if you've got a controller so in this case here what i want to do is i want to map this play button so i'll just call this a b and c so this first one i'm going to click on it and map that to the letter a click this one map that to the letter b click this one here and map that to the letter c I'm just going to go and unclick the key button so now i'm going to play and press a b and c just kind of randomly so once again if we just press on that key button there's other things you can do so i can map the down key to the letter p and i can down map the up key to the letter o and what that's doing is just just moving up or down this list that's just a different way of doing the randomization but i still have to press a b or c to trigger the play buttons I can assign random to another letter say to the letter l so as i move up and down i just press the letter l and i've just got randomization happening as i perform so once again a lot of really interesting use cases there now if you want you can take this even further to the next level so you could duplicate the instrument and we can maybe select for example a different instrument so we can select a collision instrument here a mallet and we just replace the second instrument that we duplicated and this is going to sound quite random because I, I haven't tested this but maybe for example we want to we want to map the tune button of the second instrument to this one here to this resonance item let's just hide all of those so we've hidden the chain we've got this extra instrument and now let's just press the randomize button and let's just save that one there and we'll just call that um, a sharp bass <laughs> i don't know what else to call it so once again that is available for you and for your friends and you can let's just color coordinate this baby why not and you can color coordinate it and you can do all sorts of funky stuff with it and i really think that's just the beginning there's quite a lot of use cases for using macros and for creating your own instruments and it's pretty powerful so for example you could put things like uh, effects in there and even some midi effects in there so yeah a lot of really useful powerful applications